Welcome to Tuesday, everybody. I am R.J. Smith, the horror novelist and Hollywood screenwriter, and you've landed right here at Crazy News. So without further ado, let's get to it. The first story has to do with Bigfoot and the arguments over its existence, which has plagued the public for millennium. Now, just like the UFO phenomenon, there have been tens of thousands of sightings. However, usually accompanied by blurry photos and videos. However, just last weekend, there was another sighting, and it was remarkably filmed in what I think is one of the clearest videos of Sasquatch ever recorded. Now, it originated on a train in Colorado, where the passengers were looking out the window for elk and other wildlife while passing through the San Juan National Forest. That's when they saw movement up on the ridge, and they whipped out their phones and began filming. What they captured certainly looks like a Bigfoot. Then they watched in shock. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you have to be in shock, right? You have to be in shock. If you're looking out the window and you see something that looks like Bigfoot, and all of a sudden it realizes there's a train and that it's being watched and squatted down to blend in with the environment. And this is what they saw. An elusive creature. I right, just squatted down. Let me see your camera. I'll do it. Now we all know that Colorado is a hot spot for Bigfoot sightings. And look, they even have a museum called the Sasquatch Outpost. So, you know, they're all in. However, interestingly, the Forest Service, which controls the San Juan National Forest, refused to shut down the possibility that a Bigfoot is living there. <laughs> I don't know, guys, but if it doesn't exist, why wouldn't the park rangers deny their existence? Could there really be a monstrous beast stalking our woodlands one angle now that i have consistently heard from ufologists is that they're extraterrestrials and that's why we can't find them on demand now i'm not so sure but i gotta say guys after studying this video it's hard to argue that it's not real what do you guys think leave your comments down below now in this next story i always like hearing about this kind of stuff because it gives me hope, you know, in our society. A man who spent more than two decades locked up for murder actually used pandemic relief funds to hire a private investigator. <laughs> yeah, his name was Ricky Doherty. And he spends most of his time nowadays playing with his grandchildren. He feeds the chickens, he works in the yard, where he lives with his son's family. It's a momentous change from where he was just several months ago. Locked in a nine foot by six foot prison cell, the size of your walk-in closet, where he was serving a life sentence at Oklahoma's Joseph Harp Correctional Center. Now look, for decades, Doherty had no chance at being released until he used those funds and hired the PA and other students from the Oklahoma Innocence Project, which found inconsistencies in the state's account of a 1997 cold case killing. Here's the story. Spending 34 years in prison, all charges are dropped for a Chicago man wrongfully convicted of murder. Francisco Benita has spent time behind bars for two murders that he did not commit. This comes a month after a judge vacated his conviction. CBS 2 Sade Gray was there in court when Benitez described what's next. 
52-year-old Francisco Benitez is officially a free man today. The judge simply saying this case is over. State dropped charges and I'm done. Free. Benitez spent 34 years in prison, but it only took minutes for prosecutors to drop the charges. And we always felt that that actual innocence finding was, would lead to this decision today. That the state's attorney would not seek to retry him, but we had to wait and see what they would do. Uh, and today we got the answer, and the answer is Frankie is innocent, and he's home, and this is over. Benitez was convicted in September of 1991. He was arrested when he was 18. All these years, he has maintained his innocence, saying he had an alibi and was being framed by the Chicago Police Department detectives. Lawyers with the Exoneration Project and a private firm took on his case, presenting new eyewitness evidence. In this case, there were two people who came forward, two young boys who saw the entire shooting 34 years ago and said, I saw this and I know who did it. It was these two boys from the neighborhood. Benitez says it's water under the bridge. I'm not bitter. I just, this system needs to be fixed. It's very, very broken. Just, there's more guys like me going through this. I'm just happy that mine is done. Now we have to focus on other people. After the judge exonerated Benitez a month ago, he was released on an electronic monitor. <laughs> Now it's time for him to enjoy life. Well, I plan on going to see my sister in Arkansas, and then hopefully after that I can go to a Bears game. I love the Bears. And make a trip out of state with his mother. For my 70th birthday, we're going to Florida, Orlando, for Disney. And that's how we're going to celebrate. Now, Doherty, for his part, has always maintained his innocence and claims he was railroaded by an overzealous sheriff a state prosecutor too eager to solve a murder, and an unprepared public defender. We hear this a lot in The Innocent Project, where people are constantly convicted, and later, usually decades, we find out it's not true. Now, he is learning how to use a computer and a cell phone, which didn't exist when he went to prison. Now, there has been 233 people wrongfully convicted, but ultimately exonerated just in 2022. Between them, they had 2,245 years in prison. Imagine that, guys. Imagine if you're really innocent, they scoop you up off the street and they send you to prison for 20 or 30 years or give you the death penalty and you really didn't do it. Can you imagine what that must feel like? What are your thoughts about this? Is it a spectacle? Do you believe it? I really want to hear what you think about this. Leave those comments, you know where. Now, Apple boss Tim Cook is pretty sure he spotted an iPhone, you ready, in a 350-year-old painting while he was visiting a museum with former Dutch startup ambassador Nelly Crows on Monday. The two said at the startup fest in Amsterdam that they always thought they knew when the iPhone was created but Tim Cook said he's not so sure anymore after seeing the painting. Now, the painting in question is titled Man Hands a Letter to a Woman in a Hall. And it was painted by Dutch painter Peter Hooch in 1670. In another painting from 1937, Mr. Pinchon and the Settling of Springfield by Umberto Romano, is sparking new debates as people claim they've spotted an Indian using a cell phone and many people actually believe that he's holding an iPhone. This next one sent me to my knees in laughter. It was actually an Amber Alert that was sent to millions of cell phones that showed a picture of Chucky as a suspect in the kidnapping of a fictional killer. I shit you not. And like I always say, you can't make this shit up. The alert described Chucky as a three foot, one inch tall doll wearing blue denim overalls with multicolored striped long sleeve shirt. And he was supposedly wielding a huge kitchen knife. Now the alert was sent out three times via email and text. The Texas Department of Public Safety in a statement claimed the alert was sent as a result of a test malfunction. What? Excuse me? That just seems ridiculous to me. How do you have a malfunction of a horror character as someone you're seeking in an Amber Alert? The alert claimed Chucky and his fictional son 
were last seen at a residential address in Henderson, Texas. <laughs> Don Mancini, the director and screenwriter behind Child's Play, tweeted out that, quote, please find them following the Amber Alert, adding that he and Tiffany Valentine, Chucky's love interest in the 1998 movie, are frantic. <laughs> he also added, quote, please note, the kid is non-binary. Thanks. Oh, my God. Non-binary shit. What the hell is going on? What a fucked up story. What do you guys think? Is this as ridiculous as I believe it to be? Let me know down in those comments below. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll definitely see you back here tomorrow where we have another episode of Crazy News.